Hello, it's Cried here with a guide on FCS, missile correction, firearm specialization, and the lesser known target tracking. So far, it seems like people are just going with the higher is better explanation, which in and of itself is right. But nobody actually has a solid idea on what they do or how they affect your gameplay. So, I'm here to shed some light on this topic. Let's begin with the easier topic of missile lock correction and multi-lock correction. I think a common misconception is that these stats increase the tracking ability of your missiles. This is incorrect. These stats have nothing to do with missile tracking. Missile tracking is innately determined by the guidance stat on your missile or homing type weapon. On screen here, you can see that the missiles are tracking the wheels that are moving really quickly, just fine. Despite me using the VE-21A, the FCS with the lowest missile lock correction. I've tried this with the P-10SLT, which has 150 missile lock correction, and they literally track the same way. What missile correction does is it shortens the time for you to acquire the target's lock-on. First of all, missiles do not need the reticle to lock-on. Here. I am going to use manual aim mode, and I won't even be looking straight at the training dummy. You can see that once the training dummy appears on my screen, the yellow bar surrounding the training dummy starts to fill up. Once this yellow bar has filled up, and the number appears beside it, the missile is properly locked on. Each bar corresponds to the left back, right back, left arm, and right arm of your weapons. Alternatively, you can also use your scanner to begin your lock-on time for targets behind walls, even before you see them. Pretty simple, right? The base lock-on duration is determined by the weapon. For example, the soup has 0.5 seconds for locking on, which is fairly short. On the other hand, the trainos have a 4.2 seconds lock-on time, which is quite long. However, on screen, you see that the trainos only takes 2.1 seconds to lock on. This is because each point of missile lock correction or multi-lock correction over 100 decreases your lock on time by 1%. On the other hand, any point below 100 increases the lock on time by 1%. So with 75 lock correction, you're looking at 1.25 times the base lock on time. While with 150 lock on correction, you're only looking at half the lock-on time. The multi-lock correction works the exact same way. Although, I do want to point out something I think a lot of people don't realize. For multi-lock correction, all you need to do is hold down your missile button instead of tapping it. There will be another set of lock-on time, and at the end of the lock-on time, the missile will automatically distribute its missiles to the target on your screen. You do not need to frantically look at every unit you want to hit. Multi-lock correction basically reduces the time it takes for you to hold down your missile button before releasing it. The numbers beside the yellow bar tells you how many missiles goes toward each enemy. So, while it is beneficial for a full missile build to use a high missile lock correction FCS since you don't need the reticle tracking anyway, if you end up mixing missiles with other firearm type weapons, it is often beneficial to just run the normal FCS for better firearm tracking if the homing lock-on time of your missiles isn't too long, like the soup. That's it for the missile corrections for now. I'll leave the missile details to the missile video, so be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Anyways, with the easy part out of the way, it's time to talk about the more difficult part. First, let's take a look at the FCS. FCS assists are divided into three ranges. Close range, mid range, and long range assist. Close range is below 130 meters. Mid range is 130 meters to 260 meters. And long range is above 260 meters. For the most part, you will be worrying about close range, mid range, or both since the bullet speed versus movement speed in this game makes it difficult for bullets to hit anything in the long range category so long as the enemy has a slight change in movement. Indeed, the higher these numbers are, the better. 
but just how do these FCS numbers interact with the firearm specialization stat on your arms? There is so much misinformation out there that it is staggering. To answer the relationship between firearm specialization with FCS and what they do individually, we have to take a look at target tracking. What is target tracking? Well, it's a stat that firearm specialization improves. Actually, despite target tracking's description, firearm specialization is the only stat that changes this value, at least on your stat sheet. When you change your FCS, this value does not change in the least bit. You will understand in a bit why I focus on this stat instead of firearm specialization. It's time to show you some tests. I have done 7 tests to try to give a better picture at what FCS and firearm specialization or target tracking does. Let's look at some footage one by one before I analyze the results for you. I have decided to do this test in the long distance section because it is the easiest to maintain and you can also see the results clearly. However, tracking works the same way regardless of range. Let's begin with the best firearm specialization alongside the best long range assist FCS. First of all, if the enemy movement does not change, the reticle will not suddenly jump away. This works with all combinations of firearm specialization and FCS. But with any change of movement, whether it's speeding up or changing the direction of your movement, you will see the red reticle bounce around, whether it's soft lock or hard lock. With 160 firearm specialization or 104 tracking and 92 FCS, we see the reticle follows the enemy AC really closely. Even when the reticle goes off slightly, it immediately snaps back into position. The bullets not hitting are mostly due to the directional changes and distance itself. If you observe the trail of the bullets, you can also see that the bullets tend to fire towards where the AC would be if there isn't a sudden change in movement. This is because our aiming system actually predicts the movement of our enemies. That's why, despite the travel time of shots, our bullets can still hit. The problem with longer range is longer range means a longer time period for enemies to be able to respond and dodge your attack. And now for the hard lock on. You can probably observe a slight nerf to the reticle tracking with hard lock slotted. The reticle bounces and trails behind more. Unfortunately, I cannot give a definite number of how much hard lock nerfs the tracking even though I do observe the effect. Let's take a look at more footage. This clip uses the Wrecker arms, the arms with the lowest firearm specialization, and also the Abbott FCS with a horrendous 5 long range assist. There's really not much to say about this one. It's just pretty darn horrible. It's like shooting at a ghost from 3 seconds ago. For laughs, you can actually nerf your target tracking even more by overburdening your arms. This is just a bonus clip with two KRSVs, where the system can barely predict the movement of our enemy, even when they're only moving without quick boosting. One hop later, and the tortoise is chasing the hare. Next, let's take a look at the scenario with good firearm specialization and bad FCS. Looking at this footage, we can see that the reticle goes off quite a bit whenever there is a change in direction or velocity versus having both good firearm specialization and FCS. From this, we can draw a hypothesis that the lower the FCS value, the larger the movement of the reticle is when the reticle falls off. However, we do also see that the time it takes for the reticle to reacquire its target to be shorter than having both bad arms and FCS, meaning that firearm specialization or target tracking shortens the time it takes to reacquire the target. The following footage is done with the Wrecker Arms and 92 long range assist. We see that the reticle no longer flies away nearly as far as it does when using the Nash Ryher with a bad FCS. The target reacquiring speed is much faster. Overall, the reticle tracking is much better and I do believe that this iteration is better than the previous one. However, 
One thing that might be difficult to spot in the footage is that even though the reticle sticks well to the target, the bullets are not hitting as well as it can. This is because I believe that target tracking that you gain from firearm specialization also has to do with how accurate your targeting system predicts the path of your target. You can see from the movement that the bullets fly off quite a bit from the reticle, even if we continue at the same speed after changing directions. We now see a bit of the difference between target tracking from the firearm specialization and the FCS. An easy way to think about it is FCS matters more for reticle positioning, especially how far away the reticle bounces. Meanwhile, firearm specialization helps you land your shots when the reticle is in position, and both of them contribute to the speed at which your reticle reacquires its target. Let's continue testing a few more data points so we can better draw our conclusion. I've changed the ABOT to the P05 to upgrade the FCS value from 5 to 26. Once again, you can see that my hypothesis that lower FCS assist value leads to larger jumps in the reticle is probably right. This time, I've upgraded the FCS even more to 48 long range assist. And finally, I've swapped the arms to VP46S and the FCS to VE21B for the AT long range assist. You can spot the effects of the arms and FCS being slightly nerfed from the double best version in this test. There's a reason why I wanted to collect so many data points and try to give you a better benchmark at what to look at. First, I've done an estimate on how good the overall tracking is. Not just the reticle tracking, but also including the bullet tracking to roughly estimate how well you can land your shots and rank each combination. This is because I wanted to make another hypothesis on what kind of calculation AC6 is using. Of course, this is done with some guesswork, but I am certain that I have provided enough examples and proof to back up my educated guesses better than anyone else has so far. So all I ask is to hear me out here. I have four columns here using firearm specialization plus FCS value, firearm specialization times FCS value, target tracking plus FCS value, and finally, target tracking times FCS value. We're here to check out whether it's firearm specialization that matters or target tracking, and try to figure out which one of these gives you the best indicator of overall tracking. Starting with the worst tracking using the Wrecker and 5 long range assist. This is obviously the worst, and the values in all the columns are the lowest. Next, the Nash Ryher has to be crappier than its own variant with higher long range assist. I also think that the footage sufficiently shows that 92 long range assist plus the Wrecker is better than the Nash Ryher plus the Abbott. Therefore, this is the second worst tracking. From this, we can immediately eliminate firearm specialization plus FCS. This is definitely a poor metric of how accurate your overall tracking is. Why? Because this combination has higher value than a combination that tracks better and almost the same value as the second best tracking. Clearly not a good indicator. With that eliminated, taking a look at rank 5 eliminates firearm times FCS. Of course, you can debate the human ranking of these, but generally speaking, the values for firearm specialization times FCS seems to just be too far apart and arbitrary, or too close to be the right metric. This leaves us with the two tracking versions left, which passes all the rest of the tests from rank 4 to 1. This tells us something very important that we can almost be certain of. While I can't say definitely if tracking plus FCS or tracking times FCS is a better metric, I can say that firearm specialization is a poor metric to estimate your overall tracking capabilities. However, this does not mean that the Nash Ryher arms or any high firearm specialization arms are weaker than you think, as we don't know how tracking scales with your FCS. Also, 
Don't fret about different firearm specializations giving you the same target tracking value. If from software's previous games are any indication, the target tracking the arms are giving are probably actually different when you include the decimals that we are unable to see. I've also heard that there are people that say there is such a thing as too much tracking or enough tracking already. All I can say is, you've seen the clips. There's only tracking you can afford or you cannot because of other factors such as arm weight load or recoil or trade-offs that you need to make. However, if you want my take, this is a stat that can only be altered by changing your FCS and arms, and it increases your DPS by increasing accuracy. The optimization highly depends on your weapon choice, and I think it greatly varies from build to build, as you will hear me talk about in the future for my arms video or build videos. I personally do not believe you should say something like, Oh, tracking plus firearm in mid-range already gives me 140 overall tracking value. That is good enough. Rather, the kind of question you should ask yourself is, how many of your weapons are affected by target tracking, and what proportion of your damage comes from these weapons? Do I want to be tankier and lose some accuracy? Can my arms afford the weight of my weapons? And how much does recoil control matter for my setup? Because after you can answer these kinds of questions, you will be able to see just how much tracking you are willing to actually give up. This is a far better way to approach the problem than saying 140 total value is enough. Alright, now that you know how target tracking works, let's take a look at the FCS. First of all, if the only thing you bring are missiles or other homing weapons, then there's no point looking at the close, mid, and long range assist. Therefore, your main options are the P10 SLT for missile lock correction or the P12 SML if you do utilize the multi lock missile feature. Next, if you mostly fight at a close distance because of your firearm choices, these are the options with the highest close range assist. However, I must point out that I always prefer the Abbot over the Ocelus. First, Cost is in the Abbot's favor, even though a little difference isn't usually a huge deal. Secondly, for 7 less points in close range assist, you get 20 more points in mid range assist. I find this to be well worth the trade off, as your close range assist potential is already very high. On the occasion that your target slightly slips out of 130 meters, I think the much higher mid range assist comes in really handy. Next, the tailbot has a good balance between close and mid-range, but still skewed towards close. It also has a much higher missile correction, so it better supports a mixed build between firearms and missiles. For mid-range options, and I'm still going to give some weight to close range, these are our main options. The tailbot is already covered, but this FCS has a larger focus on close range. For the truly mid-range oriented FCS, we have the P05 and the WLT001. The biggest difference between these two is 254 points worth of energy load. That is a lot. For their close and mid range assist, they have roughly the same stats. Therefore, you're mainly asking yourself are you willing to trade more than double your energy load for 22 points into long range assist? Most people are going to answer no especially if their focus is mid-range to begin with. I have personally never once found the WLT-001 to be better. Finally, the mid to long range assist FCS, because it's quite difficult to keep enemies solely in the long range category. Both belong to the VE series. While the VE-21A does indeed have amazing tracking for long range targets, you're losing out on missile correction and missiles are the longest range weapons in game. You're also losing out if the enemies manage to get closer or you're in a tight space. Therefore, I highly suggest the VE-21B over the VE-21A. Finally, we have our starter FCS, the P01. It has some pretty atrocious stats. Its only upside is its weight and energy load. So if you somehow don't use any missiles, 
and decided to manual aim the entire time, then this can indeed be your best pick. But you're really not saving much cost, so if you even engage slightly in lock-on or use missiles, you're definitely missing out. I don't recommend this unless you're doing a very specific, completely manual aim, no missile build. Let's do a quick summary for target tracking and FCS. Missile lock correction and multi-lock correction have nothing to do with the tracking abilities of missiles. What they do is reduce the lock-on time for missiles, so they actually matter more for homing weapons with higher lock-on time. Of course, even if your missiles have a low lock-on time like the soup, if you're running for missiles, you should still run a missile FCS like the P-10 SLT. Since missiles do not care about target assist and uses guidance instead, target tracking is a stat that is solely dependent on your firearm specialization while on your stat sheet. Target tracking is a better measure of your overall tracking abilities than firearm specialization. Refer back to the target tracking section for the more detailed discussion. Your FCS value determines how far away the reticle bounces when your target suddenly changes direction or velocity. Your firearm specialization affects the accuracy your tracking system calculates where your enemy is going to be and is based off of your reticle's current position. Both FCS and target tracking affects how fast you can acquire and reacquire your target. The higher these values are, the better. When choosing a close range option, I suggest picking the Abbot over the Ocelus because enemies can easily spill into mid range and it is also cheaper. The Talbot is a very balanced option for close and mid range. And between the P05 and the WLT001, I suggest the P05 for being much cheaper on the energy load and because the additional long range assist on the WLT001 will rarely come into play due to long range being quite a poor distance to deal damage right now. If you really want a long range focus playstyle, I suggest the VE-21B over the VE-21A since it's difficult to stop your enemies from entering mid range once in a while. And also, missiles have the longest range in game, so you might want to combine them in your build. And since the 21B has much better missile correction, this FCS gives you the flexibility in a long range centric build. Like and subscribe. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.